Hey guys, this is Brian, and in today's video, I'm going to share my second round game from the 2021 Kings Island Open, uh, where I played in the under 2100 section. Um, and just as a recap, uh, round one, I lost uh, against Robert J. Fisher, uh, who was an expert. And here I'm playing a gentleman named uh, J.W. Terry, Rated around 1650, so I'm a couple hundred points rated higher than him. So I actually felt like uh, I was going to do well. So we will see what happened, and let's get started. Okay, started off here with e4. Uh, I'm playing the white pieces. My opponent plays the Sicilian, c5, knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, and here we uh, have the general open Sicilian. Obviously, there's a lot of ways to go from here, which I've talked about before. We have our uh, Shevenigan um, with e6. We have our dragon with g6, which I love playing against, as many of you may know. Uh, we've got the classical here with knight to c6 and the Nydorf, which is... Um, one of the most popular ways to combat it, uh, of course, popularized by uh, Bobby Fischer back in the 70s, uh, uh, among others, and has been played by most of the top players through history. Uh, another great one was world champion Gary Kasparov, but uh, most of the top grandmasters have played it at one time or another in their career uh, because it is quite a, a strong opening for black uh, so let's keep going here. I play bishop to e2, and this is a more um, positional response, uh, mainly played. It's the third most popular response, um, and uh, I started playing it when I studied a few games of Karpov's, uh, and he championed this variation. So let's see what happened. e5. And this is a typical Nidorf move, striking in the center. So, of course, the d5 square is going to be one of the battlegrounds for the opening. Knight to b3. Bishop to e7. And here I castled. My opponent castled. And um, I played the second most popular move here, which is king to h1. Now, the idea here is that uh, white at some point might want to play f4. And so that this diagonal is uh, clear and uh, we don't have to worry about any uh, checks or any uh, anything funny business going on along this diagonal and there's a few ways that white can go here uh, my opponent played bishop to e6 which is one of the main ways uh, the other way would be to play b6 and putting this bishop here and a typical uh, response here would be to bring the bishop out and after bishop to b7, to blunt that bishop with this f3 move, uh, securing uh, the e4 pawn. But bishop to e6 is perfectly fine, of course. And here I play f4. This is the typical way to fight against this, obviously threatening to play f5. Or maybe not so obviously. I notice I say obviously a lot in my videos. <laughs> So I'll try to make sure it's really obvious when I say that. Okay, uh, e takes f4, bishop takes f4, knight to c6, and here queen to e1. So all, all of this has been played before, and here my opponent plays um, a rare move, knight to e5. So this has only been played a few times, but the typical, it's, it's, it's a fine move though, uh, this outpost is a typical one in the Sicilian, especially when this, the F pawns and the D pawns are gone. Um, it would, of course, be a bad idea to take here on E5 because this uh, secures the uh, pawn structure and helps black to gain space. Uh, so that would not be typically not what you do. And here, uh, the book move or the theoretical move is rook to D1, just bearing down on this D file. But I had another idea, which... Uh, I don't think is terrible, and that is to play knight to d4, hitting this bishop, but also with ideas maybe of landing on this f5 square. So that is okay, and has been played before as well. Um, 
my opponent plays queen to d7. And here, I, I felt that that was a little bit of an inaccuracy uh, because I don't necessarily want need to take here right away. Uh, but it allows me to play rook to d1. And now my rook is lined up with this queen. Knight to g6. Here I had a decision to make in these types of games. Um, actually, there is one master game in this line uh, that I'm looking at now in the database. And it, bishop to c1 was played. I was actually thinking about that because in a lot of these um, Sicilians, uh, the attack is on the king side and then keeping this bishop pointed at the king side, uh, I thought, uh, is one way to do it. Um, but bishop to g3, I thought was also logical. Uh, but maybe not quite uh, as optimal. The idea is that eventually we're going to be uh, taking a look at this d6 pawn. Okay, rook f to d8 is played, and here uh, I played what I thought was a pretty good move, knight to d or f5. So, of course, I'm hitting this bishop, and now I've got um, three pieces aimed at, at the... Uh, D6 pawn. Now the problem that Black here has here is that he also has three defenders, but one of the defender, the second defender, is the queen. So if this rook and this queen were uh, flipped around, then it might be a little bit different in terms of defense. But because the queen is in front, that gives me some tactical opportunities here. My opponent uh, dropped this bishop, and again, this wouldn't be a good idea to take this bishop most likely um, because it's kind of stuck behind its pawn right now. And so this was a little bit of a mistake, and I played uh, what uh, the engine tells me is the best move, which is knight takes d6. Now, during the game, I, I did feel like I, I already had, was, you know, I had won a pawn and that this was a pretty good edge. And the idea here is if he takes with the bishop, why well, take with the rook? Now hitting, of course, the queen will get out of the way, and that here I had a few options, but I was probably thinking I might even just do something like um, either playing my queen to d1 or d2 or playing e5. That's what I was thinking during the game. Instead, uh, he sidestepped and just got out of the way. So I wasn't quite sure what to do here. And so I spent a little time thinking about this. And I played, again, what ends up being a good move. But uh, my opponent and I were debating this a little bit after the game. Uh, we had a nice little chat about it. Uh, but I played e5. And here, uh, I think if he plays this, something like knight to d7, I think this is very good. And then I just play bishop to f3, and I've got space. My knight is on a good square, and uh, he's in a little bit of trouble. But uh, instead, he plays knight to g4. And this got me worried about these uh, double captures here, along with, and then followed up by capturing on d6. And I... I Yes, I didn't really... Um, no, I did have one move here, which is bishop to f3, which I knew would come. And after queen to b6, he's attacking this pawn. Um, here, I made uh, the first mistake of the game. But it really isn't horrible. It just isn't um, the best. And before I get to that, uh, I will show you what um, some other options here. So one thought was to cash in here with bishop takes b7. And after something like rook to b8, this actually would have been pretty good. Uh, I could actually just drop back here and challenge this. This is what I found in analysis. And the idea is that if I he takes here on a2, that's okay. I'm going to take here first. And then if he takes, then um, it's actually saying I can trade these knights, I think, with queen to e2. And then if he takes here, I just take here. And um, if we look at the material, it should be, it looks like I'm just a pawn up, but it's very, it, 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 the engine's uh, saying that I have a big advantage. And if we look at it, um, I mean, he, I'm attacking here. Uh, it's very difficult for him to defend because all of these squares are covered. And I think it looks like I'm just going to get this with check, which is probably part of the advantage. So uh, let's look at this line. Bishop takes d6. And this is actually one line I didn't look at. Uh, before recording this, but let's look at it together. Queen takes e6 check, and then the king has to go to h8, and here e takes d6. Um, actually, this does look pretty crushing already because this pawn is so advanced. 
Uh, we have potential discoveries along here, and it looks like it should be winning. Let's take this a couple more moves just to make sure that we understand uh, the advantage here. Knight to f8, and then it's saying simply queen to e7. And I guess that makes a lot of sense. I'm actually uh, threatening this type of stuff as well. So with that in mind, he plays knight to g6. And here I can actually just drop back and protect this pawn. So in this position, I'm about two pawns up. Uh, but it looks like the position is pretty dominating already. Um, and I like that position. I think I'll uh, keep that there. So that comes from... Um, Let's go back to the game move here. I, so that's if I would have uh, taken on b7. But that actually isn't the best move according to my analysis. So the one I did analyze more of um, is knight to d5. And at first, um, you know, first of all, let me just look at this, this idea here. My, my fear was that he would take here. Well, of course, actually in this position, the, the whole idea behind this and the move I played is that I'm attacking the queen first. So we'll look at that. Um, so actually that knight to, knight takes e5 doesn't work. But knight to d5, so there's a few ways to, for this to work. Um, the first thing to think about here is if he takes on b2. And here, this is the part that I couldn't calculate during the game. It was quite complex. I don't even know if I considered knight to d5. I can't quite remember. Um, and the killer move here which uh, is hard to find, I think, is knight takes f7. Because if bishop takes f7, then we push. And if the bishop moves, we are, uh, we just have this nice fork and we're going to win material. For example, if knight takes, then we have knight takes e7 check. And if he takes again, then we don't take on e7, but we take on d8. Let me see why here. We take here, and then probably because we're hitting this with tempo. And he, since he can't leave the back rank, the threat is here. There's actually a mating threat. For example, if he goes, um, well, let's see. If he just goes, it's not many places he can go because he's bishop. But let's just say he goes to c8 here. Then we actually have bishop to uh, d5 check. And then we have a forced mate here um, with either rook or queen to f8. And if he tries to, um, of course, his, his rook is tied to this bishop. So, so that is the issue there. So that would, would have been um, knight to d5. I wish I would have found that move. It would have been a nice move. But I guess I wasn't sure after, um, you know, it looks like he could just take it. If he takes it... Then I just take here, and it's just a little trade. And now this whole threat of taking here twice is not a big deal. Uh, but what happens here if he takes on b2? That's always the question here. And a lot of times, it's a sort, of, sort of a poison pawn. Uh, well, actually, he can't take on b2 here also because it's he's being threatened here. So he has to drop back. Let's say he goes to e6. And then I think I just take. He takes back. And now uh, I can continue on. Here, again, just ignoring this b2 pawn, queen to e7, or queen to e4, I'm sorry. Because if he takes, now it's again saying to go for this move here. So this e6 pawn becomes very weak in a lot of these variations. Okay, kind of, uh, so that is knight to d5. Well, I kind of had a similar idea in the game, except this this b pawn was w bothering me. So I actually played knight to a4, and again, uh, similar to my game against uh, Fisher in the last round, I made a move that just didn't quite feel right, but I felt it was the move I had to make because I wanted to protect this, I wanted to hit this, and I wanted to kind of uh, delay having to deal with these knights here. Uh, and the funny thing is, this position actually is still okay. It actually should be, uh, it's plus three on the engine here. Um, but uh, my opponent played queen to c7, and here's where I made a uh, the fatal mistake, which actually uh, takes this game from winning to losing. Now, again, uh, the winning move here in this specific position um, is a hard one, uh, very difficult for me to find. 
uh, and it's this knight takes f7. It seems like it shouldn't work, but here is the idea. So let's say he takes first here. So this is um, part of the, the problem, I guess, is uh, after this, I take back with the, if I take back with the queen, it's bad because then he gets this fork. Okay, and I saw that earlier, but uh, we'll see what happens here. So you take with the bishop, and then uh, let's say that um, black, uh, it says that bishop to c4 is the best move, but a natural move would seem to be just take here, and the problem with this, again, is this e6 move. So having this advanced e-pawn uh, was quite dangerous during the game, um, but I unfortunately could not capitalize on it. Okay. Let's go back, and I'll show you what actually happened uh, to my dismay. <laughs> so uh, after knight to a4, here um, the move I could not make, but I made, was um, knight takes b7. Because the problem here, and it should have been fairly simple. Again, I was looking at this, I knew about this knight fork, but in this, in, I guess in the pressure of the situation, I... I couldn't, um, I didn't think about it fast enough. Uh, he takes here, and the problem here is that I no longer have this. I can't cover e3 now because my bishop is tied to the defense of the knight on b2. Uh, actually, uh, the engine say I should have just taken there anyway to avoid what happened in the game, and so he's going to win some material. I have some compensation, and then I could actually bring it back and uh, potentially win the exchange back. But the idea is, let's say I take, is that he's won two, two pieces um, for the rook. So uh, let me see. Let me look at the material here. He actually has, um, yeah, a couple pieces for the rook, it looks like. So actually three pieces for the rook and a few pawns. So uh, this would be a moderate advantage for black at this point, but it would be better than what happened in the game. So in the game, uh, I know I'm jumping a lot with a lot of variations here, but this was how complex this particular uh, part of the game was, and this is where I, I went wrong. Um, queen takes d1 was played, and now I get hit here with the uh, fork. So a little disappointing. Uh, and... Uh, part of it, too, and part of my training is that I didn't... Sometimes um, you will let yourself get caught in a tactic because you have seen far enough, but the problem is I didn't even see this, or I did. I knew about the threat of the fork, but I forgot about it in my in the complexity of the situation, which was a little disappointing. So, queen to e2. Knight takes f1 is played, and queen takes f1. Now, I, I kind of assessed my position here. Uh, it... it Pretty much seems like it should be totally lost. Um, but from a human perspective, I looked at the situation. I, I do have the two bishops, although he has two bishops as well. And these knights can maybe kind of protect each other. And so I thought maybe I could play on. In the meantime, I also have um, this pawn majority and uh, this strong pawn here on e4. Um, but it isn't quite enough. So queen takes c2. And here, I just wanted to... The idea here was, after this exchange, as it happened in the game, I thought that um, the idea is if he takes here... Let me try to remember exactly. Then I, I take here, and then I might be... I should be okay, actually. Um, but uh, playing he played here instead, and then I figured I now have this knight, at least, on, um, on b4. So he takes on a2... And here, I thought to myself that, uh, you know, if I'm going to go down, because I, I, are, I kind of assessed that I was <laughs> losing this position, that I need to um, start to just just create some problems, create some uh, uh, complexity, more complexity in the position, and see if I can get him to make a mistake in it. So I played h4. Of course, the idea, just trying to bust open his king side and maybe do something. Didn't quite have anything concrete, but uh, just trying to hold the position together. Plays a5, which I thought was a good move, trying to destabilize this knight. And here, I uh, thought for a long time, because I now saw this idea of queen to a6, hitting the rook, and maybe with this attack here, and also maybe winning this pawn. Um, and 
I think, let's see what happens if I do that. If I play that now, um, he can actually um, take, the problem is that he can take because uh, his queen is defended. Because the idea was to uh, not allow that, of course. But um, So I kind of improved upon it with knight takes e6, now removing the defender. Now, of course, if he takes here, then at least I can get the pawn and have a little compensation, even though I'm still down in material. Uh, this game maybe has some possibilities with this pawn moving pretty quickly with my and my queen still on the board. So um, still thought there might be some hope. Okay, but he plays uh, f takes e6, which is better. Uh, I play h, uh, I'm sorry, queen to a6. And here um, I could have tried h5 right away and after knight to f8, um, maybe trying queen to a5. Well, queen to a5 doesn't quite work here as well, but hitting the rook, but uh, it says that black is totally winning after this check because I, uh, after I move the king, he can actually uh, just play here and kind of do what he ends up doing in the game, which you'll see shortly. Okay, after queen to a6, uh, rook to c1 check, knight to f8 covering this pawn, h5, and here I kind of uh, was losing uh, <laughs> a little bit of my mojo here. Um, what I could have done here was actually done, followed my original instinct, which, which was to take here. Um, the problem, this still is losing. After this, there's no way to save this pawn. And that was really my last hope. Um, but I played h5 instead. I, I don't know, I was trying to create something over here. And the problem with this, of course, is that now he's got his own threats. Bishop to f4, creating a little space. King to h1 check. King to g3, and now it is a mate in two. If you want, pause the video. You could find the mate in two for black. And my opponent found it as well. Queen to e1 check. King to g4. And queen to h4 is mate. So well, uh, that was a pretty painful game for me, um, especially since I had... Uh, what I thought was a pretty good position when I was playing the game and after I analyzed it, realized I had pretty close to a winning position uh, and to see it get dashed away in one move or over a couple moves was uh, disappointing. But the key is to uh, learn from the game. And uh, during the tournament, I was pretty bummed out at this point. I started the tournament with two straight losses. Uh, so I have to give a quick shout out to uh, my friend and fellow YouTuber, Stacia Pugh, who was at the tournament with me. And she really encouraged me and kind of told me to uh, <laughs> to uh, start over with game three. So uh, we will. Uh, so anyways, I really appreciated uh, her support during that time. And she was having a great tournament. She had a great tournament uh, as well. Um, so uh, as I mentioned in my last video, she made videos uh, of all of her games as well. And so you can check out her playlist uh, down in the description below. If you want to see my round one game, you can look over here, and if you are not already, you can subscribe, be a subscriber by hitting uh, the button down there. In any case, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with round three.